In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We thank our Lord Jesus Christ always and forever. We thank Him for this precious moment, through His infinite love, mercy, and compassion, bringing His children together to hear His living and life-giving Word, which is the truth, the Holy Gospel, the Word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'd like to welcome you all, those who are with us in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming. I pray that the Almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth uh, keeps you always in good health and in good spirit. Amen. If I could ask everyone to stand for the Lord's Prayer, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Psalm 64. Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity, who sharpen their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows. Bitter words that they may shoot in secret at the blameless, suddenly, they shoot at him and do not fear. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They talk of laying snares secretly. They say, who will see them? They devise iniquities. We have perfected a shrewd scheme. Both the inward thought and the heart of man are deep. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they shall be wounded so he will make them stumble over their own tongue. All who see them shall flee away. All men shall fear and shall declare the work of God, for they shall wisely consider his doing. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and trust in him, and all the upright in heart shall glory, and all glory be to our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Well, a very good evening to everyone. How are we? What a great weather we're having. It is winter in here on the other side of the globe. They are in the heart of going into summer and we are going into the heart of winter. It's been drizzling, raining in the, in the um, late in the evening and everyone is cold, it's going to warm up very soon. My presence normally reflects that. Come on, love. Relax, it's Friday evening, come on. How is life? <laughs> How are we doing? Good, fantastic, that's the way, that's the way. Well, my be any new faces for the first time with us this evening? Show of hands, hello, hello. New faces over there, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much. Well, to all the beautiful new faces, a very warm welcome. I pray this is not going to be the last time. I pray it's going to be just a beginning for many, many more um, encounters together with the, in the love of Christ. Well, we'll continue our journey um, with our commentary on the book of Revelation. And today we'll be um, looking at chapter 8 and verses 1 to 6 inclusive. So we'll be reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 8, verses 1 to 6. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. 
Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound, and all glory be to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Well, today we are at the seventh seal. We said there are seven seals. And at the end of the seventh seal, the seventh seal opens the way to the seven trumpets that we'll be talking about. And at the end of the seven trumpets, it will open the way to the seven bowls. We can say here that God operates in three ways. God deals with humanity in three ways, with seals, with trumpets, and with bowls. What are the seals? The Word of God. What is the Word of God? The promise of God. Every promise God made for humanity or to humanity. These are the promises. So God begins His dealing with humanity by reminding us of all the promises He has said, delivered, and will always deliver to those who are faithful and loyal to Him. After the promises, He will use trumpets. And what are trumpets? Warnings. You know, when you are about to engage yourself in a battle, the trumpet will sound. The trumpet is a reminder for you to be ready to engage into a battle. A trumpet is also used to prepare people to enter the prayer life and so on. So the trumpet here is warning. God will warn you of what is about to come before it happens. Why? Because He simply loves you. He is love. You are His child. So He will, he will warn you. After the warnings, the bowls will come. And the bowls are the judgment and the wrath of God on the world. Chapter 7, we spoke about two different groups. And it was the sixth seal. And we saw that there was uh, 144,000 and they needed to be sealed on their foreheads before God's judgment is passed. And that was the church of Christ of the Old Testament, the Israelite nation, followed by a multitude of people from all walks of life, from all nations, tongues, tribes, peoples, and you could not count them, the Bible says. And this is the church of Christ of the New Testament, us. All nations coming to the Lord Jesus. Why? Because John 3.16 says, And so God loved the whole world, that He gave His only begotten Son, so that whoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So chapter 8 now is the seventh seal, is the end of the seven seals. And at the end of the seventh seal, we are entering the trumpets. So the seven seals are the promises of God. He is coming and saying, I said it before, I am with you all the days of your life and until the end of all ages. I will never leave you orphans. I will come again and reveal myself to you. Do not be afraid. Do not worry what you shall eat, what you shall dress tomorrow. For I am the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I am always with you. I've promised you this, that I will always be there when you need me. The moment you call me, I am there. These are my promises. You don't listen to them, I'll send the trumpets your way to warn you. You are still my child, but you are being a little bit naughty now. You're ignoring my promises. You are not trusting in your loyal and faithful God. So I'll send you warnings, trumpets, because after the warning, then I'll have to judge the balls. 
So today we are entering the warnings of God to humanity. <laughs> are we okay? <laughs> Good. <laughs> now, verse 1. When he, when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. A reminder again. The book of Revelation is a symbolic prophetic book. Now, hour, an hour is a time frame in the mind of God. Is a time frame in the mind of God that God only knows how long this time is. So it is not a literal half hour, it's a symbolic time frame that is perfect in the mind of God. God has placed a time where heaven will go silent. For how long? Only God knows. Are we noticing heaven going silent in recent times? I believe so. I believe so. What has been happening in the world there has not been a very direct intervention from heaven to stop the evil agendas being implemented in the world. Are we living? The Lord proved it how far the church has walked away from me during the so called pandemic. The church was in full support of such evil agenda. And I'll call it again evil big lie nothing but a lie from evildoers those who worship Satan came and implemented this agenda and the church was an absolute support of it that just proves how distant the church is from the Lord Jesus we are living in the end of times but the Lord is faithful the Lord is loyal and the Lord is the sovereign authority no one can do anything without the Lord Jesus. No one. So you have to be strong. Fear nothing, my dear friend. Climate change. They can swim in it. They can swim in it. Heaven went silent for a half an hour. An hour is a time frame that is perfect in the mind of God half an hour is half of this time so it looks like God shortened it out of love and mercy for his beloved children he shortened it instead of making it a full time he made it half time because he knows we're not gonna be able to last if heaven goes silence on us for a long time we will lose it I'm gonna show you I ain't going to be faithful anymore. <laughs> so the Lord, out of mercy, he made it half an hour. Verse 2. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. See? The seventh seal opened the way into the trumpets, the warnings of God. So these warnings of God who were they given to the seven angels who stand before God himself? Some of these seven angels, one archangel Michael, another one archangel Gabriel, another one, maybe you haven't heard of this one that much, archangel Raphael. You see, Raphael is mentioned in the book of Tobit, chapter 12, verse 15. Now these are the second canonical books. They are not included in the readily available Bibles that you read because the readily available Bibles that you read are a Protestant print. With all love and respect, I'm talking. They are a Protestant print and they consist of 66 books. But normally when in our church, if I should talk about, our Bible consists of 73 books, not 66. Because in, in the apostolic church, we have the seven 
uh, deuterocanonical books or the second canonical books which are not present in the Protestant print. So Maccabeans, you know, Tobit, and the wisdom of uh, the book of Sirach and the rest. So when you read in the book of Tobit, chapter 12, verse 15, Raphael, one of the seven angels. These are all archangels. Raphael says, I am Raphael, one of the seven holy angels who, pre who present the prayers of the saints and enter into the presence of the glory of the Holy One. Who is the Holy One? God. I am Raphael who present the prayers of the saints. And we're going to come to it in verse 3. You see how the books link? Yes. Tobit is not in the Protestant print Bibles. So how are you going to find out who are these seven angels? If you don't read the book of Tobit, how are you going to find out? It's not mentioned. Sorry? It will give you the Bible very soon. Yeah, yes. We've got, we've got one already in place, and very soon we'll be, we'll be, uh, you'll be having a copy of it. Absolutely. So, Raphael in Tobit 12, 15 says, I am, I am Raphael who is presenting the prayers of the saints, and I'm entering into the presence of the Holy One, which is God. Now, when we come, when we come to verse 3, listen to this. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. The throne is the throne of the Holy One, is the throne of God. And he brought this incense and presented it before the golden altar, which is before the throne of the Almighty God. One of the angels came. Who is this one of these angels? One of these angels is one of the seven, Raphael. Now, verse 3, I'll read it again. Then another angel having a golden censer. What is a golden censer? You know, when you come to an apostolic church, during the Holy Mass, we have this incense, yes? This vessel, that's the censer, we put incense and we use it during the Holy Mass, the body and the blood of Christ, the Holy Liturgy. We use it. So this is the golden censer. And he was given much incense. Having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense. Incense is what we place in that censer. And then vapor comes and goes up. That he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints. With the prayers of who? <laughs> all the saints. My beloved, this is in heaven. So are the saints dead? Can a dead, can a dead person pray? The Holy Bible says, he offered it with the prayers of all the what? Saints. So if somebody tells you, saints are dead, come and answer me this. Yes? with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Now, please pay attention. The Lord God ordered Moses when they were in the wilderness, the Israelite nation when they were in the Sinai desert. He said, I want you to build a tent. This tent is God's house in the wilderness, the tabernacle. And then when the Israelite nation arrived to the promised land, Jerusalem, that tent turned into a temple made out of brick and mortar. That temple which King Solomon built on Mount Moriah, where currently is the Masjid Al-Aqsa and Dome of the Rock that belongs to our beloved Muslim people. And that's where 
the, the conflict is between the Israelites, the Jewish people, and the Muslim people. Mount Moriah, which is in the heart of Jerusalem. So when King Solomon built the temple, the temple was made, had three components to it. There was the outer court, and there was what they called the holies, and there was the holy of holies, three parts to the temple. The outer court, the holies, and the holy of holies. The outer court is outside. The holies is where you, my beloved people, are sitting now. This was called the holies. The holy of holies is where the clergymen and the deacons, when they go up there and fulfill the service of the sacrament, which is the body and the blood of Christ. So the Holy of Holies is where the clergymen go up to, the altar. The Holies is where you, my beloved, sit, and the outer court is outside. Here it says that this angel, another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar. So this angel came and stood at the golden altar and he was giving much incense. In the outer court, the time of the temple, there was an altar made out of bronze. There was an altar made out of bronze in the outer court. And next to that altar of bronze, there was a tank full of water made out of bronze as well. The altar outside made out of bronze, they used to bring all their offerings, the animals, slain them, and then put them on that altar and burn them as an offering to God. They called them the burnt offerings. This is not our topic. There were seven types of offerings given to uh, the God of the Old Testament for the forgiveness of the Israelite nation's sins. One of the offerings was called the burnt offering. Now the burnt offering was as follows. When they brought this lamb or sheep or goat, they would slain that animal and then burn that animal with fire with no water. So you, they put that animal on that altar, which is a bronze outside, and they would burn it until it becomes pitch black, gone with the fire. There was no water at all. That kind of offering was called burnt offering. And that burnt offering was offered specifically for the remission of people's sins, Israelite nation sins. Christ fulfilled all seven offerings, including this, the burnt offering, because the Lord Jesus, he was hung on the cross at midday, 12 noon. He got burnt on the cross with no mercy. Water is mercy. You see, when you put the meat in the water and you, and you expose it to fire, it's okay. The meat gets cooked and it tastes beautiful. But if you put the meat directly on fire, the meat will be burnt. You can't eat it. So there was no water, no mercy. The Lord Jesus said, I am thirsty. They gave him a vinegar with, with a very, very bitter, bitter taste in it. He just put it on his mouth and he could not take it. It was that bitter. They were merciless toward the Lord Jesus. Why? Because he is fulfilling this offering called the burnt offering, where, he, where this sacrifice must be burnt with no water, with no mercy. Christ was burnt on the cross with no mercy for the remission of the world's sin. So outside there was a bronze altar where they used to bring their animals and burn them to, for the forgiveness of sin. Now why was it bronze? Because bronze, when it gets exposed to fire, it becomes much more stronger. See, if you expose gold or silver to fire, it becomes liquid, dissolves, becomes watery, liquid. But bronze, you expose it to fire, becomes stronger. 
You can't break it anymore. So fire makes the bronze stronger. Outer court represents the body. Holies, where you are sitting, represents the soul. The holy of holies represent the spirit. First Thessalonians 5.23, St. Paul says, human is made out of body, soul, and spirit. This is the temple of God. You are the temple of God. So what was being done in the Old Testament was symbolically representing what the Lord Jesus was going to do in the New Testament. The temple of God is Christ. And Christ is three, body, soul, and spirit. So the body of Jesus, when it got exposed to fire, became stronger. Because he came to carry our sins. He came to carry our sins. Now sins are fire. They will burn you. They will destroy you. They will kill you. So sins are fire. Jesus' body got exposed to sin. The more fire was exposed and, and, and thrown at this body, the stronger the body became. He stepped on the fire of our sins and with his holy fire extinguished our sinful fire. Now outside, your sin must be forgiven. Why? Because you cannot enter the holies. You cannot enter the house of God unless you are sin free. To enter God's house, you must be his child. And in order to be his child, you must be sin free. So outside, your sins are washed. Jesus is hanging on the cross. That is the outer court. Calvary is the outer court. Jesus is hanging on the cross. He shed his precious blood. He washed away our sins. And then there was a tank with, filled with water where they used to wash their bloody hands when they were offering the animals. Their hands and everywhere were becoming bloody. So they had to wash their hands and became pure, those priests, in order to come in into the holies. Why? Because that tank represents the holy baptism. My sins were forgiven by the Lord Jesus. And what is baptism? Baptism comes from the Greek word faptisma. What is faptisma? Being submerged, dyed in a color. When you dye something in color, all of us, we were dyed by the blood of the Lamb of God. When we were submerged in the blood of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, we came out whiter than snow because his blood washes away the sins of the world. Baptism is the washing away of the sins and becoming cleansed from every sin. When I was cleansed outside, then I was able to come inside. Inside the holies is the golden altar. That's where this angel stood before this golden altar. And this golden altar was before the throne. The throne is the holy of holies, the altar. So this golden altar was here before the altar, before the holy of holies. But this time inside the altar is gold, not bronze. One day we'll do a topic on this. Very interesting, the Old Testament. Very interesting. Now, why gold? Gold, my beloved, is the nature of God. Gold is the nature of God. Now, please pay attention. What do I mean by the nature of God is gold? You see, gold is a substance. When you place it outside, you expose it to whatever environment it will never, ever connect with the outer environment. If you put a piece of metal outside, there is one day it's hot, the next is cold, one day it's raining, the next is sunny. After a little while, you'll notice this metal begins to rust. Why is this metal rusting? Because it's 
connected with the surrounding environment. And as it connected with the surrounding environment, it became influenced by the surrounding environment. And the surrounding environment caused this metal to rust, decay, and disappear. Gold, hot, cold, rainy, sunny, gold remains gold. Does not connect with no environment except with the environment like itself. Gold, gold will only connect to gold. So gold never loses its value. Gold never changes its nature. Gold will always be gold, no matter what the outer environment is. Now, prior to receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we were in the world. Let's look at the 12 apostles, the 12 disciples of the Lord. Prior to Jesus Christ choosing them, they were normal human beings like any worldly human beings. They went their normal day in our routine, lifestyle, fishing, whatever, buying things, cooking things, doing things, and they were of this world. When the Lord Jesus came and chose them, he changed them. How did he change them? By what he has done in the outer court. What did the Lord Jesus do in the outer court? He is that bronze altar where he was the offering that was burnt on the cross to wash away our sin and pay the debt once and for all. And he gave us baptism. When we were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, we became the children of God and God became our heavenly daddy. When God became our heavenly daddy, then and then only I was able to enter the house of my father. A slave cannot enter the house of his master and stay in it, but the son not only enters, but inherits his father's house. So this was made possible by Jesus outside. I was in the world. He chose me. He washed me. He cleansed me. He gave me his holy baptism. And through the holy baptism, adopted me to be the son of God. Then now, as, a, as the son, I am entitled to come and live in my father's house. When he brought me inside, he made me the golden altar. I became that golden altar through the bronze altar who is Jesus Christ. He made me like God. He gave me the nature of God. Are you with me? Father Isaac, can you get me a cup, please? One of the cups. You probably have first seen me once before I say this, but I want to I wanna sort of illustrate it. Not just by with words, but I want to illustrate it with this cup that we use during the Holy Mass service so you'd know what I mean by God changed us and gave us divine nature. Now, gold is God's nature. Why? Because God is not influenced by any outer environment. This cup carries the blood of Christ. This cup, I can buy it from a shop. You can buy it from a shop. No one can stop you. But you don't have the rank of a priest, but you can still buy this cup. You can buy it. You pay the price, it's yours. You take this cup your, to, to your home. You want to put in it water? You want to put in it Coca-Cola? You want to put in it something else? You're free. You paid the price for it. When this cup comes to someone like me, a bishop and above, a bishop and above, when it comes to someone like me, what do we do? We pray on this cup. We anoint this cup. We anoint this cup with a prayer, a special prayer. The moment we anoint this cup, this cup becomes of God's. When it becomes of God's, what happened? The shape remained the same. 
The color remained the same, but one thing changed with this cup. The deed of this cup changed forever. When God changes you, when the Lord chooses you from the world, and he says, now you are not of the world, you were in the world, but now that I have chosen you from the world, you are no longer of the world, you are of Christ. So what did God do? He changed your purpose and your deed, your work has changed. This cup that has been anointed, the nature didn't change, the color didn't change, the shape didn't change, but something changed, the use of this cup changed. Now this cup cannot leave the church. Now this cup can only carry the blood of the Lamb of God. I cannot put in it anything else. If I do, I'm in trouble. It's no longer that cup that was once upon a time in the shop. My beloveds, before, when I was in the world, I used to swear, I used to lie, I used to kill, I used to destroy, I used to drink, I used to gamble, I used to take drugs, I used to, I, I was in a gang, I used to do a lot of things evil under the sun. I went with this and this and this and this and this and this and everyone and I did everything wrong under the sun. When Jesus Christ came and chose me, he touched my heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. He anointed me to be the vessel used for the glory of God only. I am no longer of the world. When Jesus chooses you, you cannot go back to that old person and go clubbing and go in those dark alleys in the city and exchange some bags with one another. You cannot do that anymore. Because your deed now, your work is specific only for God. The golden altar are, are the saints. When God changes you, you are now to work for Him, not anyone else. You are now to work for Him, not anyone else. I can't have fun the way I choose to. I can't say whatever I want. I can't dress up whichever, I, whichever pleases me. No, you belong to Christ, my beloved. He purchased you with his own precious blood. He paid the price for you. You belong to him. Now you need to adhere to his rule, not yours, not the world's. So not everyone that comes along and says, let's go, you go. No. Not everyone who comes to you and says, let's do this, you go and do it. No, you need to come back and see what Jesus expects of you. And you do that. So no more clubbing. Now it's the church. No more swearing. Now it's praising. No more darkness. Now it is the light. No more evil. Now it's holiness. I need to change. I need to change. I need to allow God to change me. Every day ask the Lord, Lord, make me a better person than what I was yesterday. Make me closer to you today than what I was yesterday. Lord, allow me to be your true son today, tomorrow, and all the rest of my life on earth and forevermore to come in the next one. Let me be you, Lord Jesus, and you be me. I don't want to live in the pig's field anymore. I don't want to do evil things. I don't want to look at me and see myself filthy, dirty, ugly, poisonous, dark. I don't want to see that. I want to look in the mirror and see your image imprinted on me. I want you, Lord. So the next time my so-called friends call me, let's go out. Sorry, I am busy. I have a date with my Jesus. I don't have the time for Satan. I don't. Please, I beg of you. Do you know why this Corona thing came? This lie? Jesus allowed it. 
It's not up to Satan. It's not up to the secret societies. It is not up to no one but Jesus Christ. Whether you want to believe in it or not, this is the truth and will always be the truth. Christ is in charge of heaven, earth, and hell. Ah, when you have an encounter with this good-looking Jewish man, then you will know what I'm talking about. Everything is under the control of Christ. But the Lord allowed this because people walked away from him. And more so the Christian world walked away from him. So many countries that were once upon a time built on Christian values and principles and ethics, today they are nothing but secular, atheistic you know, countries and governments. Canada, atheist. Europe, atheist. Atheism has infiltrated Canada, Europe, and now America. They have introduced all the laws that offend the Almighty God. Same-sex marriage, abortion, and the likes of it. These are offensive to Jesus Christ. And I don't give one penny what people think. I'm not judging. I'm just stating truth. All of us we know, regardless what your religious background or your race is, none of us came from Adam and Steve. All of us came from Adam and Eve. So grow up and be humans for a change. Be humans. Good luck, you've got the Labour Party now. And the Greens. Woohoo! <laughs> Yes, Habibi. Looks like the time came for Allah Akbar. <laughs> now, the Lord brought me in. He made me the golden altar. He gave me divine nature, the Son of God. He made me from a slave of Satan, slave in bondage to freedom, the sons of the Almighty God, altar. We are the children of God. And these children of God, what do they do? They pray. What are they called? Saints. Saints cannot be dead. Please. They are praying with the incense of this angel. And you know, when we put incense in that vessel, what happens? The vapor goes up. Doesn't go down. Goes up. And these are the prayers of the saints. The prayers of the saints always go up to the throne of God. They never go down. Secret societies, they've turned the pyramid downward <laughs> because they're praying to their God, Satan. My God stepped on your God and he crushed him in the flesh. The weakest component of the human being is the flesh. He, he crushed Satan with all his might and power. So these are the incense, the prayers that go, just like the incense that goes up, so as the prayers of the saints, they go up. Where do they go up? To the throne of the Almighty God. What are these prayers? You see, the seven angels were given the trumpets. What are the trumpets? Warnings. Before the warnings, no matter how hurt God is, no matter how angry God is, but He still brings His mercy before the warnings takes place because He's still Daddy. He loves us. So before the trumps blew, He brought another angel and with incense in His hand. And the prayers of the saints going up to the throne of God. What are they saying? Lord, have mercy on the people on earth. Uh, we know they have sinned. We know they have walked away. We know the church has sold you like Judas Iscariot did. We know that, Lord. But we also know you are the merciful God. 
we are sending our, our prayers just like that incense that go up. We are sending our prayers as saints, begging you, God, to still have mercy on your church and on the people of this world before the warning sounds. And you know, when we said earlier, the, the heaven went silent for half an hour, it is scary when things are silent. They're very, you know, eerie. Before the storm, silence come. You know, when heaven is about to thunder and shake the whole earth, there is this eerie silence in the heaven. And before you know it, there is a big explosion in the sky. The plane is, is, is idle, parked in front of this runway. Before takeoff, it is nice and quiet. But when the time comes to take off, oh my goodness, the whole earth rumbles and the engines go full blast ahead. And the whole plane shakes. But beforehand, it was nice and quiet, and I enjoyed the company of my next door passenger. But when it took off, he was yelling, I could not hear a word. So when heaven goes silent, that is telling you there is something massive coming after this silence. 2030, Hitler Jr., Klaus Schwab. You will own nothing and you will live happy. <laughs> My goodness, with all love and respect, very childish, these people. Poor thing. He's going to die, you know. Just like every human being is going to die. I'll die, he'll die, everyone will die. So what are you going to achieve, my dear Klaus Schwab? What are you going to achieve? But that's, that's what happens when you follow Satan. When you chase Satan, that's what he's going to do to you. He's going to blind you and he's going to walk you in absolute darkness where you will not be able to recognize your right hand from your left hand. This is the condition of the 21st century generation. They are so lost, they cannot tell their right hand from their left hand. It is what Isaiah says, the Lord God says through Isaiah, to his people and to the people of this century. You have called the light darkness and the darkness light. You have called the sour sweet and the, and the sweet sour. This is exactly what people are doing nowadays. They're calling the light darkness and the darkness light because they chased Satan, my beloved. So this angel came and was given much incense and he offered it with the prayers of the saints because saints are living in heaven in paradise and they are praying for us. They're interceding. And I will do a session about saints and the intercession of saints. I will do one specifically about that and I'll give you plenty of biblical references in relation to that. Um, verse 4. And the smoke of the incense with the praise of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar. He took the censer, but you see, the prayers and the incense went up all the way to God. So God hears the prayers of the saints and the angels as well. He hears them. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar and threw it to the earth. And there were four things. One, noises. Two, thunderings. Three, lightnings. And four, earthquake. When this angel took fire from the golden altar and filled that censer, he threw the censer onto the earth. When it hit the earth, Four things happen, noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. Where did he take this fire from? The golden altar. 
What was in this, in, in this, uh, in this uh, censer? Incense. What is the incense? The praise of the saints. So he took the praise of the saints and that incense went to God first. And when God received it, it was the intercession of the saints begging God to have mercy on the people who are on earth. Then this angel, after God's permission, by of course, because nothing happens without God's permission, he took that you know, um, sensor that is filled with fire and threw it down at us here at the earth. The moment it hit earth, there was noises, there was thunders, there was lightning, and there was an earthquake. Four things. These are the prayers of the saints interceding for all of us. When God allows saints to intercede for us through the grace of the Almighty God, through his beloved son Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit when those intercession of saints hit us number one thing we hear noises number two there is thunders in us number three there is lightning in us and number four there is an earthquake happening in us when saints intercede the first thing is we hear noises what are the noises the prayers of the saints are approved by God therefore these words are coming from God to all of us and these words are what the mercy of God before the trumpet blows ie before the warning God will still come and show mercy to his beloved children before the warning noise when you hear the word of God through the intercession of saints it causes noises inside of you, meaning it awakens your conscience. You see, the Lord Jesus is saying to his beloved church, since you walked away from me, your conscience went to sleep. I need to wake it up. I will send you my word through my saints intercession who have shaken heaven for me to have mercy on you. My saints in heaven are praying 24 7 non-stop for the church to be saved and delivered I will send my word to awaken your sleepy conscience and when your when your conscience is awakened through my grace and mercy by the intercession of Saints thundering will take place after your conscience is awakened and thunder what do they do There's a huge explosion in the sky. That explosion, no matter how tired and sleepy you are, you will jump from your spot out of fear. Right? So the Lord is going to come, is going to tickle your conscience and wake it up. Then he'll shake it up. Number one noise to wake you up, thunder to shake you up because you've been asleep the Lord has been calling you all your life what have you been doing ignoring his callings my daughter I want to see you in the church hello Rachel are we going clubbing I'm coming and then the Lord came again my son I want to see you in the church hey buddy what are you doing tomorrow nothing you want to go downtown? Of course, mate. You're not tired? Now, nah. For downtown anytime, brother. Church is for the pensioners, for the oldies. We're still young. We need to have fun, bro. It's boring. Did you say yet you pray and you go to church? You're only 23, 24. Something wrong with you? People in your age, they need to have fun. Dress up semi-naked, do all the Botox and the makeup and show yourself and let's go and have fun. And let's stay overnight in the city. Don't worry about mom and dad, who cares about them? It is our time now, we enjoy it while we can. 
Well, Corona came, shut the city down. Shut every club, shut every cinema, shut every alley, shut every airport and every port. For two years, we were prisoners. Is this the fun you want in the world? Look what the world has done for you. Made you a slave. See, the enemy, my beloved, now I'm talking with experience, please. <laughs> this beard did not go white for nothing. It's not easy to be a Santa Claus, right? <laughs> Takes a lot of sweat. I can assure you, I can assure you, Satan exists. If you don't want to believe the Holy Bible, there is a person here that is living in the flesh and I, I gain nothing out of this by saying it. I can assure you, Satan is as ugly as you could imagine and beyond your imagination is ugly. He is absolutely hatred. He is not full of hatred. He is hatred itself. And he hates every single one of you to death. You have no idea how much hatred he has for every single soul. And more so, more so, those who belong to Jesus Christ. He is on fire. He wants to shred you to pieces, burn you. It is the Lord who is protecting you. By the way, Satan is very powerful. Don't think you can win with him. Outside of Christ, he will swallow you before you blink your eyes. No matter how smart, how strong, how wise, forget about it. You cannot surpass the wisdom of Satan. He is over 5,000 years old. You cannot surpass that wisdom. How old are you? 20, 30, 50, 100? He is thousands of years of wisdom. He will play with you like a little ball in his hand. It is the Lord who protects. Now Satan wants to swallow me right now. Oh, he wants to come and rip me. <laughs> Get lost. Yes, my beloved. Satan is ugly. He will come to you first and he'll make it look gold. He'll make it look honey. He'll make it look perfect. He will lay the road, the path. He will make it floral. That's gonna look, you know, this is the best experience I've had in my life. I went out with my friends. I've never enjoyed such freedom, such beauty in my entire life. I don't know what I was missing on until I went out with my friends and we had fun, brother. Satan will make it look, there is no tomorrow. This is it the best life until he drags you and he pulls you and he pulls you and he bring you into the deep into the deep and into the deep and he knows and he knows he is good with the timing as well he knows now you cannot do nothing anymore he will let go of you and will make fun of you and then you look to the shores where Christ is. And you have swum so far away and so deep. And it's a wild ocean. There are so many enemies that will come and devour me. It is so dark, so lonely, so fragile I am, so weak, so vulnerable, so alone. That's what the enemy will do. And the so-called friends, they will disappear at the time most needed. No more those friends that used to laugh in your face. You will see them no more when you are fallen. Once upon a time, I said, my friend is the only loyal person in my life, is better than my own mother and father. But when I fell and I was broken and I hit rock bottom, I realized my friend was nothing but a big lie in my life. 
They were with me for the wrong reason. And at that fallen moment, I came to this truth and realization. There is only one true friend, and that is God who art in heaven. Daddy, my heavenly father, because everyone left me, everyone deserted me. Jesus was always there when everyone hated me and walked away. Jesus never walked away. Jesus never walked away. Jesus never walked away. I've mentioned this before. King David in his Psalms talks about the crow. You know that black bird? The black bird, the crow. This is a true story. When the father and the mother have a baby, the baby of the crow, when it comes out, has no feathers, it is just skin, and the skin is dark blue, almost bluish blackish. And the baby is so ugly, the parents despise the baby's ugliness, they leave him in the, ne in the nest and they fly away. They say, what an ugly baby. Well, well, who brought him to life? You parents, then you must be uglier than this baby. But the, the parents leave this ugly baby alone in the nest. No feathers, no wings, no power, no strength. For 40 days, the parents fly away, leave the baby alone to die. Who comes to the rescue? God. That's a true story. God, through his infinite wisdom, Put something in this little baby. The beak, through those vents, brings out a substance, bring out a substance that attracts small flies. When the flies smell this substance, they think it's food. This substance is like super glue. So when the fly comes thinking it's food, it sits on it, it gets stuck on it, can't fly anymore. The little baby brings that tongue of its and then eats that fly, lives on these flies for 40 days until the wings and the feathers come out and he can fly. After 40 days, the parents show up. The baby is reliant on itself. Thank you, mom and dad, for not being here. That's why King David says, my father and mother deserted me, but God embraced me. He is referring to the crow baby my own parents deserted me but God embraced me if God embraces this bird how much more he will embrace you you are the image and the likeness of God you are his child his own son do you think he will desert you impossible make him your friend enough going with the wrong people for the wrong places, for the wrong reasons. The noise will wake my conscience up. Thunder, God will shake me up. He'll put me through lockdowns, social distancing and masking. Thanks to Anthony Fauci. And the WHO, World Health Organization. All of these big liars. The whole world is a one big lie. It's so sad, but very sad. God gave us a beautiful world and we destroyed it through our ignorance, greed, false glories, and chasing after Satan. When God shakes me through thunders, there's gonna come lightnings because after the thunder, the lightning will shine and the whole sky will light up. When God shakes me, His Word will light up my life. I will realize for the first time ever, my goodness, where have I been all this time? How blind was I when the Word of Christ lit up in my life like the lightning? When He enlightened my life, I realized I was so lost. And for the first time, I'm going to thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, thank you 
for allowing me to see your light once again. I am indebted to you forever, Lord. And when his light shines in me and in my life, the last thing is a huge earthquake will take place. An earthquake shakes the ground beneath you and then you will go to bring that earthquake to everyone that Christ brings your way. You want to give Lord, the Lord Jesus to people. You want to say to the people, come, you guys have no idea what you're missing on. I was, like, I was one of you. I was exactly in the same mentality. I was walking in the same way as you guys. I used to have fun like everyone in the world did. But today, when I go to the club, I suffocate. I receive my life, my oxygen when I go to church. Please come. I want to take you to church. No more club. I want to I praise the Lord. No more swearing. I want to speak the truth. No more lies. I want to walk in the light. No more darkness. I want to be the child of God. No more slave to Satan and the filth of this world. It's an earthquake. It's an earthquake. It's an earthquake. It's an earthquake. We need the Lord Jesus, my beloved. Seek the Lord and you shall find him. Knock and the door shall open. Ask and you shall be given. And you shall be given. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. That will be the next session. They're preparing to blow the trumpets. A warning of God to humanity. World War III will take place whether we like it or not. Nuclear war. But we need to ask the Lord Jesus to pray to him and ask the saints to intercede as they do. We need to ask them to intercede more powerfully for the Lord to have mercy in order for the wrath of God does not fall quickly on the human race. Lord, have mercy and delay whatever is coming. But it's coming. A time will come no more churches. No more. So while you have the chance, while you are still so freely you can make it to church, don't ever say, I don't have the time. Believe you me. Believe you me. Believe you me. A time will come. People will beg, will beg, will beg God for mercy. No more. No more. God still showing his mercy, my beloveds. To prove it, we're still sitting in the church. And you're listening to this good-looking bishop. That's the mercy of God. My beloved daughter, you are my beloved daughter, but you are the beloved of your heavenly father. You are the beloved of your Lord Jesus. Torah. Don't ever, don't ever imitate the world. Don't ever look at other girls, what they do in this world, and you try to become like them. Don't ever imitate people that are living for this world. Imitate those who are trying to live for Christ, not the world. Do not look at your external beauty only. But look more so on your internal beauty, more than your external beauty. Because whatever external is temporal, and it will fade away before we know it, 
I will age. My face will wrinkle. My beauty is going to disappear. But I need to focus on my inner beauty. I need to make my heart beautiful for my Lord Jesus. I want to invite him into this heart. I don't want it to be dirty. I don't want it to be ugly. I don't want it to be filthy. I want it to be a place worthy of my Lord Jesus. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, change my heart. Lord, cleanse me. Lord, make me a vessel where you are glorified in. My son, don't mix with the wrong crowd. I beg you. Going out, doing things as you please, you are only destroying your life. I beg of you. I have seen so many people. I was going to say something, but it's being recorded. <laughs> it was a confession of a young man. But I won't, of course, I won't mention names. But he came back to the Lord. One day, this young man, muscly guy, if he were to punch a concrete wall, he would, his arm, his hand would go through it. He was this powerful. Muscly, tattoos everywhere. You know, you look at him, you get scared. I was scared. Right? I'm an old man, right? Okay. This muscly young man, all tattoos all over the place. He came, he said, I want to talk to you, but I don't know why I want to talk to you because I'm not interested in people like you. I have been so distant from the Lord Jesus. I have been so distant from the church. It doesn't worry me. I don't care about people dressed up in this outfit. But for some reason, unknown reason, but I believe it is the Lord Jesus who brought me here and it is the first time ever in my life I am talking to a someone and opening up and confessing. I haven't done this with my best friends, with any human being, and let alone to do it with someone like you. That was impossible for me to do. But I believe it's the Lord. He told me things, what he has done in his life. <laughs> Stunning. <laughs> now, that's what he call a man, brother. <laughs> huh? Stunning. He did everything under the sun wrong. Everything. Whatever you can imagine and you cannot imagine. He did everything under the sun wrong. But you know, when he spoke about and he mentioned the name Jesus, he started crying like a baby. This solid, muscly man, tattoos everywhere, cried like a baby. Cried like a baby. He came back. He got married. And he settled. He said, I've had enough. He said, I've tried everything in search of freedom, in search of peace, in search of fulfillment. I thought if I do this, and if I gain this, and if I achieve this, I will have what I'm looking for. He said, everything I've done, I've always been empty from inside. I've always been a slave to my own lusts. He said, today, I want to say to the Lord, I surrender. I surrender, Lord. Take me, break me, and make me. I surrender. We thank the Lord. Well, we'll continue this, um, this journey, God willing, next Friday. Um, but until next Friday, I've just got a couple of announcements to um, say, and then we'll, um, we'll finish it off. 
Um, we have uh, one of our initiatives programs um, that we have in the church for uh, quite a number of years uh, under the Good Samaritan Aid Society, and it's called Food Angel uh, Initiative, um, where we, um, we hand out food hampers once a fortnight on a Saturday. So tomorrow, Saturday, is, uh, is the day where they hand out these hampers. When you come out, and I don't know if you've seen it before, there is a display of a hamper in the foyer area. Um, all these food and more and more, more, uh, more of that is only for $30. But this $30 hamper, my beloved, it goes a long way by helping other people who are in extreme, extreme need. Extreme need. Um, we are all aware, even here, everything has skyrocketed. The prices have gone through the roof. Everything has become extremely expensive. The groceries, the petrol, everything, everything, everything has doubled and, 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 uh, and tripled and quadrupled. So I believe it's also a good help for all of us as well to receive this hamper. It's only $30. But I believe the one that is being given uh, out tomorrow is worth anywhere between $350 and $400. And it's only $30. And it's quality things. I'm asking you, look at it, ask, and, and receive one. By taking a hamper, you are helping other people in need here in Australia and also abroad, my beloveds. So I encourage you to uh, support this initiative and tell more people about it. Uh, the more we have, the more we can help people uh, all over here in Australia and also abroad. Um, after the Bible preach, if I may ask, uh, I know people sometimes line up and they want to see me, but the issue is by the time I finish, everyone is gone and I don't even say hello to everyone. So what we will do, we will go into the church hall, we'll have some snacks and stay back and socialize and at least I can say hello to everyone. So if you don't mind, please do not come and approach me here in the church and, and talk to me. We'll just go straight into the hall and we can um, mingle and talk and socialize for a few more minutes together. Um, yep. And also we need to adhere to the operating hours in, of this church. So by, by 9.30, quarter to 10, we need to be out of the church, if you don't mind. We have neighbors here and um, these are the operating hours for the time being. We're hoping that they're going to ex be extended later on. But in the meanwhile, it's around 9.30, quarter to 10 maximum. Uh, to be out of uh, the premises of this uh, holy church. Thank you so much for your attention. God bless you and bless your loved ones. And uh, I pray that you always continue to come to hear the word of God. If I could ask everyone now to stand for the finale prayer, please. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you, and protect you all the days of your life, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless.